just like the one I just showed you on Jupiter, the raging storms, the global upheaval in 2008. Same thing happened in 2004. Where the heck did all this energy come from? The planet just goes, this energy comes out. It's amazing. Uranus, as of 1986, looked like green pea soup with hardly any peas. Just the green part. Nothing to see. It's just very flat. Now, this is false color, so that's why this is brighter than this. We're not so much concerned about the color, we're concerned about these little guys. Because that's what we didn't see before. These are huge storms. Now remember also, Voyager 2 swept by Uranus. So it saw the whole planet. It didn't just see the side that we see. So even with a satellite going past, we're now seeing all these storms that were not there before. And you're starting to see that happen. It was called featureless as a cue ball, but now Eric Karkoschka is saying, really big, big changes. Now this is more typical of uh, NASA, when NASA says, ground-based observations show seasonal brightness changes, not well understood. Oh, moving on. <laughs> they try to downplay this stuff. But this is interplanetary climate change. This is something that's happening to every planet. And all they do is they tell you that it's based on the tilt angle of the axis to the sun. The sun is heating it up because the pole is tilting or because the equator is tilting. And whatever the planet is doing, they just alter it for that planet and say, oh, well, it's got to be caused by the tilt angle of the planet relative to the center of the, uh, of the sun. Not so. Neptune, 1989, relatively few bright clouds. But between 96 and 2002, there's a 40% increase in brightness in the near-infrared range. This is very significant because, obviously, this could not be caused by anything we normally understand. And it's the same thing that's happening throughout the rest of the solar system. It's all doing the same stuff. What you're going to see now is a description, a visual description of how it's been changing. So check this out. You watch down here, you can start to see how it grows over just six years. So that's phenomenal. I mean, that's like turning on a lampshade and having light suddenly burst out of the planet that wasn't there before. The near-infrared range is not visible to the eye, but it's just above the visible level. So it's within the spectrum of what can be seen if you had the right eye to see it. So you can do that with a camera, you just can't do it with the naked eye. Now Pluto is experiencing global warming even though it's moving away from the sun. There's been a 300% increase in its overall atmospheric pressure. This whole system tells us that Earth changes are not unique to the Earth. They're happening everywhere in the solar system. But even on Earth, we're seeing things that are not attributable to the ordinary climate change that we would think of as being caused by SUVs. Volcanic activity since 1875 has gone up by over 500%. Sea level is increasing. Temperature is increasing. Tornado activity is increasing. Natural disasters are increasing. The inflation-adjusted economic losses are increasing. Here you see the, the red indicates how much heat there is at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, on the floor of the ocean. And then what you're seeing is 85 and 96, or 99 rather. So in 14 years, you see a substantial warming on the bottom of the ocean. Now guess how the scientists explain this? Well, of course, the sun is warming the top of the ocean. And then those warm particles just start sinking down, 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 which is what they're going to do, right? And they sink to the bottom, and they warm up the bottom of the ocean. Oh, that's, that's got to be what it is. They warm up the bottom of the ocean, they sink down. So the next time you ever want to boil up some hot dogs, just get a hair dryer and <laughs> It works great. <laughs> Why wouldn't you do it that way? You'd, you'd probably take three hours of boil. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Heat rises. That's the first, one of the most basic laws of thermodynamics that we all know. But not here. Something's happening inside the Earth. Well, just as we were talking about climate change in the solar system, we now have a change in this presentation. My microphone started malfunctioning at that point in the talk, and so what we've done is to move this shoot here to Joshua Tree, California.
this is a quick interview. The next 30 minutes or so, we're going to get him back up for a full hour in the near future. But I wanted to get Bob Fletcher's take on why government is running around like a chicken with its head cut off, trying to gear up for war with people, not just here, but in every other country. Is it the world economic meltdown? Is it the derivatives overhang? Is it QE unlimited? But I wanted to get Bob's take as well, if you just joined us. Uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi was just on, going over all the documents, all the admissions that our government through Obama and Saudi Arabia and others is funding al-Qaeda jihadists to turn basically the entire Middle East, North Africa, and even Kenya over to them. And clearly, these are the groups brought in by Odinga and others in the last six, seven years. And Obama advised them on all this. And, and, and I know the government winds up al-Qaeda and helps them and then uses them as a threat to take our liberties. And they use them to attack the Serbs and attack the Russians. And, but now, uh, it's just moving headlong forward. And reporters are getting harassed. All this stuff's going on. This article's up on Infowars.com. Saudi Arabia threatens to end career of AP reporter over chemical weapons story. That's up on Infowars.com. What's happened here is we're such open societies that mafias have come in. They've taken over Europe. They've taken over the U.S. And Saudi Arabia is only one small part of this mafia, but very central, obviously, in the Middle East. And Bandar Bush, as he's known, because uh, he was such good friends with the Bush family, came out a few weeks ago and threatened the Russians with al-Qaeda attacking the Olympics if they didn't back off in Syria. And then now uh, the, 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 the foreign minister of uh, Russia is in the news saying, we're being pressured by Saudi Arabia and the United States. That's who he says. To back off and let them have Syria or we're going to regret it. I mean, this is wild. And you've got the U.S. aggressively with NATO for almost three years attacking Syria. And it's so immoral and it's so naked. And the average person is either waking up or getting more dumbed down. I mean, I, I was near downtown a few days ago doing a video shoot last week. And it was on like Wednesday. And there were already people parking their RVs and cars to tailgate for a football game. Was UT here this weekend? They were. I mean, I didn't even check or no. I just could tell it was UT people, all their UT stuff. And there's, there's these adult males who will run up to you and, and, and basically, you know, I'm really depressed, UT lost and stuff. And I'm just like, man, we're worried about nuclear war here, collapse of society. And it's because... The men in this country, and I'm not knocking you if you're a sports fan, but, you know, if you spend 15 hours a day playing video games or 10 hours a day watching sports, could you spend one hour a week for freedom or getting informed? I'm just really freaked out right now. I mean, I'm getting really freaked out because it, it's all out in the open now. It's out in the open that the rebels launched the chemical attack. Bob Fletcher, businessman, inventor, film producer, speaker, and author, after years of business, as a professional career, Bob became involved in the U.S. government top secret covert arms sales. He's testified as a top uh, witness to Iran-Contra. His company basically got infiltrated by the CIA, taken over as a front company. And uh, BobFletcherInvestigations.com is his site. And, and we've told your story, Bob. I just wanted to get your take today, and then we'll get into why you think they're gearing up for all this. I wanted to get your take on the state of the world, what's happening, how crazy it is. 91% in Reuters poll against the war. So that's good news. I see an awakening happening on one end, but the crazies run things, and then the rest of the public are zombies. And I just have a feeling of dread. for. And everybody else I talk to that's a business person or successful or informed, they have the same sense that we're about to witness biblical things, basically. Bob Fletcher. Right. Well, uh, that part I, I absolutely agree with. And, you know, last night I was watching with my wife. We were watching the introductions on a whole slew of the new television programs. Completely garbage. They, I mean, it, it embarrasses me. It embarrasses me that my fellow Americans would even watch the garbage that they're producing to fill, infiltrate their brain and fill it with trash so that they don't even recognize what's going on. 
uh, like what you're talking about, the the access to the sports and uh, all of that ridiculous, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, God bless you if you're supporting your team, you know, but don't spend uh, five days leading up to a football game. You know, what happened to your kids? What happened that week uh, to your family? And what happened to the world while you were out there trying to buy the extra couple of six packs of beer to throw into your RV to go to the football game five days down the road? I mean, it's absolutely insane. I can't understand how the how successful the bad guys in government have been in the last 35 years in turning our entire American culture into sponge brains. It's unbelievable. It's embarrassing, personally shocking and embarrassing. Now, as you know, I have been chasing bad guys in government for uh, 35 years or something like that at this point in time, uh, the, the entire uh, second last half of my life. And uh, so I, it got, and after being involved with a multitude of investigations out of the Senate and the Congress and being a federal witness a couple of times and a whistleblower on multitude of times, unfortunately uh, not having uh, anybody uh, of sufficient strength to, to listen to any of us, uh, you know, being a whistleblower is fine, but if nobody hears the whistle, it doesn't matter, I guess. Uh, but I've been doing that for years and years, and and to and it became it became a regular recognized thing that people were stealing multiple millions of dollars. If you had a foot or a finger in the pie in Washington D.C., somehow you and your buddy could get away with a few million bucks. You could always get a an extra couple of. Uh, uh, a few thousand bucks for this and that, a couple of million bucks for an extra uh, whatever project maybe your family wanted to do and things of that sort, if you were had, had your finger in the pie and had a friend inside, all right? Uh, and that became regular. The, the, the theft of a few million here and a few million there didn't mean very much. But then I recognized a, a while back that we were talking billions of dollars disappearing. And then, believe it or not, it became recognized that it was trillions of dollars. 2.2 trillion missing from the Pentagon alone uh, as of 2001. That's correct. But to put the icing on the cake, how about the $9 trillion on, uh, from the uh, Federal Reserve that just vanished? And it vanished apparently. Now, wait a minute. Now, I'm going to say that again. $9 trillion. The Senate and the Congress investigated and asked directly the um, uh, investigative uh, branch, the lady that was in charge of uh, theoretically doing maintaining audits and maintaining oversight on the Federal Reserve. And she was asked directly, what about $9 trillion on off-the-books indicated money with the Federal Reserve that vanished someplace into European banks? I remember that we've played that clip. In fact, that clip is in is in uh, is in Fall of the Republic. Exactly. So, so if they can steal trillions. Why not arm Al Qaeda publicly? Why not have Obama sign an order that he can arm Al Qaeda like he did two weeks ago? They just do whatever they want. So and it's mind boggling. And this lady now, she was one, and uh, she was the uh, what do they call it? The uh, uh, old. Uh, uh, the auditor. I'm missing the word. But anyhow, she was the, in charge of oversight, doing a, potentially any uh, oversight auditing of what was going on. And they said, are you investigating that? The fact that there apparently is $9 trillion disappeared into European banks someplace. And she said, well, we don't call it an investigation. We, we like to look into it, but I'm not sure what you're talking about. And, of course, she really did. But uh, she was kind of stuck that somebody had even asked So bottom her. line, what's going to happen? All right, so what we're looking at is trillions of money disappearing, billions and trillions. The gold is all going out of Fort Knox. If anybody thinks there's a dollar thirty-five worth of gold left in there, because when you had foreign nations ask for their own gold back, the United States told them it would take seven years before they could give them an audit. So the gold is gone from Fort Knox. Trillions disappearing from major financial institutions. And it, so you have to say, where can it go? Because you can't steal that much and hide it. You cannot launder a trillion dollars. That's a physical impossibility. Now, if you are the government and you are building 
hundreds of underground facilities, which is going on, and you are assisting the Russians to build 5,000 of them underground, and the other nations of the world, to your assisting with our, our tax dollars to build underground facilities, and they are putting in multi-millions of dollars into weapons uh, to, uh, to shoot rioters on the street. They're, they're spending all this money cutting deals with Russia to bring over extra people to assist in the time of need. They're training 24-7 for open war against us. It's high treason. Okay, now, here, here's, so I had to sit back and I said, well, wait a minute, what's going on? So, of course, then with just a little more inquiry, a little more snooping, and a few more people coming to you from under the table, uh, the bottom line is simply this. They are fully anticipating a, a catastrophic celestial impact. That's the terminology they used when they were cutting the deal with the Russians to bring assistance over here when needed for FEMA, for the federal emergency. They are anticipating a celestial impact. We, I happen to know, and by the way, all of this is on a new video that um, I'm trying to get out. I've never had so much trouble in my life. I've had entire computers burn up on me in the last two, last seven months on this thing, literally. They're, they're doing a number on me to stop me. By the way, it's funny you mention that because they admit that's the plan to set up world government is for a defense system against asteroids. So I want to get your inside take on that. The Alex Jones Channel is the official page of the Info War, but don't miss what's happening on our other channels. The Info Warrior, with the week's best videos. Prison Planet Live, where Paul Joseph Watson gives his expert analysis. And keep up with the rest of the Info Wars crew on our other pages. All of our videos are available to repost for educational purposes. See the sidebar of the Alex Jones channel for the subscription links. And remember, you can always find our videos in the highest quality by becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Bob Fletcher, for folks that don't know who he is, I've had people ask me, who's Chuck Yeager when I'm talking about him? <laughs> he, he was a big part of the Iran-Contra hearings, a key person. Just because they came in and wanted to be partners with his toy company, it was very successful. And then it was a CIA front, and they said, this is the way it is. And generals and CIA would come traipsing in, like in a movie, like Spies Like Us, when it's the you know fruit company or whatever. That's exactly how it works, ladies and gentlemen. I've had family where the CIA's come and said, well, we, we you know... You've got some other family in the CIA, and you're a good family. We want your business to be a front for us. And obviously the family said no. But th this is huge. And we'll have him with us until about 45 after that. I'll get to all the other news. There's a lot of it. But, Bob, this is a short segment. I want to ask you right now, is your gut telling you something's wrong? Because, I mean, they don't care if nuclear reactors are melting down now. They used to care. They used to care and not let troops use DU. Now they don't care. I mean, it's like the devil runs things, and they're persecuting all forms of goodness. I mean, I know they've got an underground base program that's for nuclear war, and they say it's for asteroids. And I mean, I know all that's going on, and you have sources on it, but it seems like there's something else going on. Well, you, you know, no, it, no. Primarily, that's it. What what it is? They had all of a sudden discovered, and it was prime. Let's put it this way: it was a vague possibility a while back that there was uh, going to be that this tenth planet, the Nibiru Planet X, whatever you want to call it, was potentially way out there and it's going to come back and make a circle through. All right. Well, that was kind of and uh, close to Earth. And that was kind of a maybe possibility kind of a thing. But someplace around 1983, and that was verified by a central intelligence person, friend of mine out of Washington, at, at such a high level uh, that um, uh, the, this particular agent used to write speeches for Reagan and Bill Casey, with Bill Casey for a long time, head of the CIA. Anyhow, the bottom line was that about 83 sometime in that period of time, they had some kind of a confirmation that, Hey, this thing is coming back, and it's going to take it's going to take a few years. It might take twenty years or so, but it absolutely will be coming back. And they started at that point in time expanding the underground facilities and all of that. And it's got nothing to do with nuclear or anything. What it has to do in reality, all of this, and it, what.
what irritates me more than anything is they have kept all this totally secret from the general public. They've lied and covered up about it and said, oh, no, it was this, that, and the other thing. But they have taken every single possible dollar bill and gold bar that they can, and it is gone. It's out of here. And it has either been directly applied to the construction of these hideout survival facilities for the limited few. And by the way, it's been coming out in the news. What are these giant concrete fortresses in the Ozarks and other areas? And then it turns out there's bases under them, and they're really like an underground train station above ground terminal. That's what I've been told by people involved in the construction. Uh, this, that particular construction you're talking about, by 72,000 square feet, it's registered as a private party home. The guy, the guy's a central intelligence operative and a genius that has put together many.